And just like that, it is time for another round three knockout battle in Matcha Madness. This is battle number two of round three, or battle number 26 overall. 26 days of matcha goodness. Today we have the Uji Hikari Cultivar Showdown. Coming into round three, we have matcha from Uji Shirakawa, Uji Hikari Cultivar from Tete Japon, up against Hikari Blend from Breakaway Matcha. This should be very exciting. As mentioned in the previous Uji Hikari battles, it is one of my favorite flavors in matcha, so very exciting to get this round three battle. With that said, let's get them brewed up and start tasting. See you in a minute. And there we have it, two beautiful looking matchas. Deep, green, bright, vibrant. As I was whipping them up, I was getting a bit of a uh, bit of those baking spices coming off of the curry uh, from Breakaway Matcha. So let's see if I can still detect them. I think what happens is the crema layer, when it gets on top there, kind of suppresses some of the aromas coming off. So I've been trying to pay closer attention as I'm aerating the matcha to see what notes get flung out at me. Let's try giving the matcha from Uji Shirakawa. Strong pea, very strong young pea, young pea and asparagus. Those two, asparagus and young pea, are very, very close in scent and flavor. Try the Hikari blend now from Breakaway Matcha. Yeah. Oh, and now I get a little bit of that chocolatiness. Not as strong as I think it was Blend 98, but there's a little bit of chocolatiness. And just kind of a, a general chlorophyll greenness and kind of a, a light chocolatey undernote. All right, give them a taste. Cheers. Just so good. Something about that Uji Hikari bridal that I really like. On the taste, it's a little bit more like cooked peas, a little bit of uh, cooked zucchini coming through, a little bit more of those cooked green flavors, a little bit more umami pack. Try the breakaway matcha now. It's also got, I'm gonna call this like medium peas, right? So it's not, they haven't been hanging on the vine super, super long, but they're not super, super fresh either. So they got a little bit more complexity to them. They're not just kind of pure green sweetness. There's a little bit more of that chlorophyll vegetalness coming through as well. Some of that umami kick. Just the slightest, slightest hint of something deeper. It's not quite woodsy, but it's more towards, I'm thinking more like brown flavor notes, but not the cereals, right? Like I picked up in a couple of them like barley and wheat and stuff. It's not quite that level. So good. The more it sits, I think, the better it actually might be. That's also so good. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. One last test. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Just a slight bit more, uh, just a little bit of astringency coming off of the um, Te De Japon offering in the Hikari battle today. And just a little bit smoother and creamier from the Hikari from Breakway Matcha. So that is going to move on to our round four semifinals. Super exciting. With the matcha from Uji Shirakawa getting kicked out, our bracket now looks like this. And I can tell you a little bit more about matcha from Uji Shirakawa Uji Hikari Cultivar from Tether Japon. This is their, uh, of course, 20 gram size container. The international order brought the conversion in at $34.67 at time of purchase, or approximately $1.73 per gram. Season is May 2018. Cultivar is pure Uji Hikari, origin Shirakawa Eri. Origin, of course, just like all of the Tether Japon. Shirakawa area, Uji City, Kyoto Prefecture. Now for the description. This tea was made from the Uji Hikari cultivar. This variety is meant for both Tencha and Gokuru and is highly renowned, though much more uncommon than Semiodori or Asahi and above all, rarely used unblended. This matcha is remarkably powerful, yet despite its impact in the mouth, the whole remains round, mellow, with no astringency at all and provides a creamy impression. The umami is strong, but sophisticated and refined. The aftertaste is just as powerful, mellow and very long in the mouth. Delicate fruity aromas of citrus and red fruit that can be discerned. An outstanding matcha, a line personality and excellent, and it is perfect for usu cha, obviously, but also for koi cha. I did get a little bit of astringency, so it's one of those 
I feel like some of the no bitterness and no astringency claims are coming from people who are drinking a lot more matcha and have kind of built up perhaps a tolerance to astringency and bitterness, just like capsaicin, right? You can eat spicy foods and it starts to build up that tolerance to the actual spice. There's a physical change happening in your body and mouth and your receptors to those molecules of capsaicin. The more you eat, the more dull that sense becomes. So that's how famously spicy cuisines for certain cultures can maintain that high, high level. It's because the people who are eating that every day, it becomes, it's not as spicy to them. It's physically doesn't have the same reaction. Whereas somebody who doesn't eat spicy foods all the time, it will be overwhelmingly spicy. I have a sense that some of these descriptions when they say no astringency or no bitterness, it's that same kind of people who are in this tea world and are drinking a lot of matcha all the time have kind of built up kind of a tolerance to some of that astringency and bitterness. And so with my slightly uh, less refined palate also helps me pick out some of those uh, baser notes that they may be overlooking. That's my theory anyway. Long-winded uh, rebuttal there to the claim of no astringency, but extremely, extremely, extremely good matcha. We be happy to have that any day of the week. But making it into our semifinals today is going to be the Hikari from Breakaway Matcha. And I will see you tomorrow for yet another round three knockout. See you then.